Oh, okay. That's good. Um, so, so first, I, I just want to say a little bit about what this building behind us represents. So you can see it's all boarded up. This is, of course, the headquarters of the 3rd Precinct, which was burned down. Um, thanks to, burned out I should say, thanks to Tim Wallace's completely failed leadership. And, you know, talking to these folks behind me, I mean, these are law enforcement officers, a lot of them were here, some of them for many days when this was allowed to happen. And remember, during those riots, these guys were given up for dead. Their police chief told them to stand down, hoping that it would save their lives. Uh, a couple of them just told me just now their fear that they would be killed by the violent mob that was attacking this precinct. And the important question is, what were their leaders in particular, what was Governor Tim Walz doing to keep these officers safe and to bring order to the city of Minneapolis? The answer was absolutely nothing. They described being left for dead by the person who wants to be the Vice President of the United States. And to all the folks who are watching this, I think the message is very simple. That do we want a kind of leader who stands with the law enforcement, who fights for them, who protects their lives as they go about keeping us safe, or do we want someone who encourages rioters and looters to burn down this precinct, who leaves the officers for dead, and then a president who then bails out some of those same rioters and looters out of prison? I think we want the law and order president. We want somebody who stands with our law enforcement, and most importantly, who stands with the communities that depend on law enforcement, and that means we want Donald J. Trump as president. I want to give some, some notice and some appreciation just by name to the folks who've joined us here today. It's a little chilly. I'm an Ohioan, so this is cold as hell for, for, for early October, mid-October. Uh, but we've got retired police officers, Brianna Garman. Brianna, thank you so much. We've got Colleen Sonby. We've got Dave Velasquez. And then we've got Paul Haddle and Scott Creighton. These are all retired officers in the city of Minneapolis. Uh, Scott Creighton. Um, I hope you don't mind me calling this out, but actually had his teeth knocked out when a protester threw a brick. Again, completely unprovoked, completely unnecessary, and completely abandoned. And because of it, Scott, thank God it wasn't worse, but certainly had a very serious injury. We are also joined by Sheriff, Sheriffs Joel Brott and Wayne Cyberlick and Brian Welk. Thank you all for being here. And then we've got Fraternal Order Police Member Carol Stray. Thanks, Carol, for being here. And then finally, we've got congressional candidate Joe Tayrob. Joe, thanks so much for, for, for carrying the message and trying to serve your community. We certainly need it. We have to remember that what this represents is the complete abandonment of basic public safety by the leadership of this state, including Governor Tim Walz. When the National Guard came three days into the riots, let's remember what happened. Tim Walz told Donald Trump initially that he didn't need the National Guard, and then, of course, as things completely spiraled out of control, he then begged for the National Guard, and of course, Donald Trump willingly offered the National Guard just to keep these officers safe, but also to bring some public safety back to Minneapolis. You know, Donald Trump and I believe that public safety is the birthright of every American citizen, rich or poor. It's why we believe in strong border laws. It's why we believe in supporting our police officers as they try to keep us safe. It's why we believe that you shouldn't encourage rioters and looters to burn down cities like Minneapolis. You should put the bad guys in jail. You know, as I was thinking about what I was going to say today, it occurred to me that there's a fundamental racist assumption at the heart of most progressive arguments about violent crime. This, this idea that somehow it is racist to enforce our laws and to throw violent criminals in jail is absurd because we know that most black Americans, whether in Minneapolis or outside of this city, are law-abiding citizens. 